This is Mitch, and welcome to the Real Estate Investor Summit podcast. Man, we're smoking hot here. We had some technology problems, and so we're trying to cool our tempers down. I put my BFH up so I didn't smash my computer. For those of y'all who don't know what a BFH is, uh, just think about it for a minute. Um, it has to do with a big hammer. Um, so I'm here with John Matheson, and he has a, a company in a software company that leverages um, finance. He's also a real estate developer. So we're going to get started in just a second. Let me pay homage to our sponsor, TaxFreeFuture.com. If you don't have a tax deferred or tax free retirement plan in which to grow your finances, you are missing a huge tool in your tool belt. Um, please go to TaxFreeFuture.com. We're going to tell you what your financial advisors are not telling you and you won't believe it. And we're going to tell you why they're not telling you. And then you can make your own decision. 37 little video vignettes there. Give us your little micro information and we're going to really open your eyes to how fast you can grow small amounts of money in a tax-free or tax-deferred environment. Taxfreefuture.com. Thank you very much. All right, John, I got the, I paid the bills here. So um, <laughs> uh, we got squeezed a little bit on time, but we still have a good 28, 27 minutes. So let's get right to the beef of it. Um, you're a real estate developer uh, gone Software CEO, how does that happen? Give us a little bit now. Yeah, so it happens when you live through, this will be my fourth recession, right? Like you, you and I have been around long enough where our first one that we went through was in the late 80s, early 90s. And, and that one is when we all figured out how to buy stuff. And then this last one, 2008 and 9, all of our friends in commercial banking decided to get so defensive that they weren't lending to us the right way. So when we came out of that recession, our balance sheet actually built and how we did it was with either private lenders, as you're familiar with, or we did it with institutions that were more capital based than, than bank lending. So coming out the other side, we realized there was such a disconnect between those of us who invest in quality real estate and the funding sources that we thought we should try to come up with a way to be able to communicate better. And that's where we hatched the idea of a software. And if you think of it all the time that you've been in this business and I have, we've never had a software as the buyer or the borrower that we could use in commercial. Now in residential, they're everywhere, but in commercial to be able to pre-qualify ourselves for a commercial loan on property before we ever speak to the lender. And the old way of doing it used to be. Is it yeah. technical thing for that, you know, to get your collective BS together before you start shopping? Right. You know, and the thing of it is, I, I, you know, who wouldn't want to know what the property can be financed for before they apply? Yeah. So yeah. you get into investment space where you have over five units in one building that's cash flowing and you want to buy it. The seller's asking, gosh, knows how much a million dollars for it you got to put 25% down. How do you know the bank is going to be there or the lender will actually be there with that 750 and you're going to write a purchase and sale and start paying for due diligence. We all know as we get into this space, one of the biggest problems is the retrade halfway through a transaction and due diligence that happens because your lender says, well, we can't do that 750. We can only do 680 on the property and you don't really get explained why. So we wanted to solve that ourselves because we were all using, we all have our own little back of the napkin or back of the envelope way of trying to figure out if a property works before we'll even buy it or look at it. Sure, you have the same type of system as we do. My father would look at stuff and he had four little inputs that he'd do on the back of a piece of mail. And if it didn't work, we didn't do the transaction. <laughs> so it's the same, same thing with the software. So how do you make it easy? So that's, why, that's how we got from real estate developer to software. And now we've got people who use this thing to be able to know before they apply what the financing thresholds of a property are. They can help establish their asking price. And if you're a seller, you kind of know what people can finance on your building before you even establish an asking price. You might even have a place they can go, you know? Right. And we do have that too, which has kind of come out of this nice little recent fund that we're having across the, across the nation. So like, so there's a lot of different kind of people in this audience probably. And some of them may only have 
10 or 15 houses. I mean, they're not really big boys and they're not really commercial, but you can kind of bundle up those houses and, 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 and will that keep moving you into some kind of commercial space as far as a lender's concerned? Yeah. So, I mean, this is the thing you and I both, when we started, I started, I bought my first house with $30,000. Right. So, I mean, we all start somewhere and then you grow, 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 and then you get to be our age. And it's kind of funny. The resume is long, but it's long because you did a lot. (laughs) But there's still that old Will Rogers adage, right? Even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. So, right. So you got to keep even a broken clock's right twice a day. (laughs) That's right. Or a blind squirrel gets a nut once in a while. Right. So, so. You and I can go on all day with this. I love it. But so you sit there and say, well, how do I grow this business? And you need to have some form of legitimate financing. And if you're somebody who's buying in this era versus the 90s when we were all rolling, right? This era is a lot harder to get the inventory in, cost effective in different parts of the country, especially you get into four, five, six units of single family and you say to yourself, hey, I want to level up. I want to get into that apartment building space where all my rents are under one roof. So what you need is a commercial loan facility to do that. And the first place to start is by using the modern tools that are available to you to be able to communicate with a lender. So when you get into leverage finance software and you look at it and you take the leverage report that it generates and you hand it to a lender, you suddenly look real prepared for what you're proposing, which is one of the real value adds that people tell us about the software. They can now walk in and the lender goes, whoa, where'd you get this? And it starts the conversation differently than the way we've all started it in the past, which is we walk in with our little presentation, as you say, our our BS put together. We put it in front of the lender. We do a nice little presentation and we all do the same darn thing for the next week. So four letter word starts with a W and ends with T, right? We wait. And who gets, and it's a tech, it's a technology driven world today. Why do we have to wait? As a lender, why can't you answer me right now? So here's a technology report that says, I have gone through your pre-commercial writing guidelines and it says I'm a go. Would you like to continue the conversation with me on this property? Yes or no? Makes it really easy to start that lender conversation. Yeah, so also banks will go a lot further with you or explore at least a lot further if, if it looks like you know what you're doing and you look organized. Well, and you've hit it right in the head. What we find as we speak to the lenders is they, they all tell us that they hate to tell borrowers no. The lenders actually say they don't enjoy that part, but that the borrowers, all of us, come in with either unrealistic expectations or we're unprepared, and that's their position. Really, or don't have enough documentation to satisfy their underwriting Right. So they look at it as it actually costs them money to deny us. So they don't like that. So a lot of times they're looking to shut us down right out of the gate with the conversation. So many of them have moved their their methodologies of intake online because it's less time for them. You know, the old days when you and I started, you walk into the bank or shake their hand, they'd write you a check, you do the documents later, right? Oh, that, the good old days, the good old <laughs> the good old table back at the back over over a baloney sandwich when they went out. Right? Yeah, and you'd map it out and it would be good. But now, so so what what we like is a new way to start the conversation with the lender is on one piece of paper. And so we put our, our information, if I'm going to go buy a property today, not single family, it'd have to be multi. So if I'm gonna use the commercial code book for lending, I put my information into the leverage software that I, that I pick for the property I have, it takes me five minutes to input, and it generates me a report, I just send it to the lender. And I say, okay, you wanna continue the conversation on this or not? And the lender knows what that means because Leverage is a third party software that's showing me my transaction works. If they don't do it, the favorite word of any capital raiser, right? That you have to, or that you have to know is the same as the barber who's got a, he's doing his haircuts and there's 10 men waiting for the cut and one guy's getting cut in the chair and says, Hey, I don't like my haircut. Can you fix it? And he looks at the guy and says, next. (laughs) He doesn't have time to fix it, right? He's got 10 more people waiting. So with the lender, it's just next. And if you're in the digital world today, 
and you're attaching this stuff to an email and you're just sending it to lenders, they have to answer you quicker than the old way, which was do a big presentation and hurry up and wait. Right. So how much does this software cost or what can someone expect to, to pay for this? So when we sat and looked at it, you know, the cost of software is insane. One of the things about property, you can always figure out, you know, usually you get a grip on what it costs to, to buy a piece, develop it, and then what you're going to put into it before you sell it or keep it, right? With software, it seems like the cost just, when you go to build the thing, it just goes up, 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 and up, and it's all in space. You can't see it. I like the property where I can jump up and down on it. This darn tech, I can't touch and feel the same way. So, we looked at it and said, well, we think we can help a lot of people. Our goal is to get this in the hands of as many investors as we can. So we kept the price down to where you can get an annual subscription for $197, which allows you to vet as many transactions as you want before you ever speak to a lender and maintain a dashboard so that when you go to refinance in a couple of years, you have all your original data that's in place from your first application. And you can use that to show the lender how you've performed on your building for the last couple of years. People are using it today in this current environment to refinance, to get cash out, to be able to survive this crisis we're in. Okay, so first of all, $197 annually is, is a great price. I mean, it's a non-issue if you're anywhere remotely in, in this space. I want everyone to go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash leverage, reinvestorsummit.com forward slash leverage, and go over to the show notes, and over there we'll have everything that you want to put in there, John, to contact you, any samples, anything you want to give away, anything, you know, uh, a way for people to get a hold of you so they can get a consult and, and get their arms around this, you know. Terrific. They may have specific questions. Uh, and you'll be able to show people probably on a Zoom or something really how everything. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Or something. So go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash leverage, keyword leverage. And um, so give us some case studies. How has this helped from your so it's funny in, um, in, in commercial real estate space, I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of classics. So we had a, uh, I, you know, young man to me is someone in their twenties, right? <laughs> so he, yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah, to you and I, right? So he, uh, he purchases the software and he gets a report and he walks into a lender, walks into the bank and in, he's buying a multifamily. I think it was a, a, a five unit transaction, but he's, and he's got, a, he's got his purchase and sale. And he's got his, his output report. So he walks into the bank and it so happens that he's in an institution where the tellers are on the first floor, but there's some commercial lending on the second floor. So he's just in one of those type of branches. So he meets the business development manager for the bank. And he says exactly what we tell him to say, which is, I bought third party software that tells me my transactions ago for the multifamily property I want to buy. Would you like to continue the conversation with me? sets the report on the desk, sits back and doesn't talk. So now the business development manager, she looks down, looks at the report and says to him, can you hang on for a moment? I, I got to be right back. She goes upstairs. She brings down a senior vice president from lending, looks at the report, asks him where he got it from. So he tells him he bought the software third party online. And the guy reads the leverage report and says, young man, you are one of the most prepared borrowers that we've had walk into this institution. Never done it before. And, 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 and right. Probably baby faced and probably right. was never to the second floor. You know? So, so would, and, you know, of course we'd like to continue. Right. So then of course our help desk gets the call and it's, should, all right, so I'm feeling good. I'm going to negotiate right now. <laughs> and I'm like, no, don't negotiate right. Just take your first deal and be good with it, right? It's a bank. They'll be, they'll, they'll, they'll be prime plus something. But that, that is one of my favorites for people who are just starting out, getting, getting some real benefits from being able to start the conversation differently. But let's, but let's talk about that for a second, you know, negotiating rate. You really don't have to confront them at all, but you ask them for a, a you know, a letter stating what the terms they're offering. I forget the technical name of it. What is that yep. letter? It's a letter of intent. Yeah. Letter of intent. Uh, 
Uh, and they, they, so they give you a letter of intent, you know, with all the particulars about the loan that opportunity that they're offering you. And then you can take that, that letter with your report and put her, put that letter on top of your report and go to the next bank or go to five banks and make them compete. Right. Why not? You don't really have to, I mean, when I was first in this business, I was, first of all, I had to be very loyal to the person that gave me my start because I didn't walk in organized. They organized me. They got my collective crap together and they, they, they gave me a half a million dollar line of credit and he was my best friend from high school, the high school quarterback. I was the tailback and there was a loyalty there and I knew he was charging me a, a, a half a point or point over and there were some things, but I wasn't going to argue with him because without him, I'd have never even got a commercial loan. And I wasn't, gonna, but when he, when that bank, when he left that bank and went to another bank that didn't do what I do, I became a free agent. And then all the other people I dealt with in that bank had moved on to other banks too. And all of a sudden I could go take letters of intent from anybody and everybody and put them on, you know, take the best one and put it on everybody's desk and go, I'm about to get a loan from somebody. Does anybody want to compete for me? And it's, it's not unusual and it's, and it's almost expected of you to, to have other offers and compete. So don't feel like you're being a, you know, a jerk. Uh, when no. you do the banks, you, you do have to, you know, always take special care of personal relationships. If you owe somebody a favor, then, you know, don't make the man compete over a quarter of a point. You know what I mean? Just, right. it's, well, it's a good deal. Go down and make your money. Especially if you don't know banks, you know, right. go to new banks. You don't know them from Adam. Make them, if they want to get to know you, make them compete. It changed my whole world being able being able to go out there and have the banks compete for me. Now there are banks that don't do what you do. You know, I, I hypothecate notes. I pledge notes for lines of credit or 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 for actually 15 year fixed no adjustment loans. You know, I went to 27 banks and found four that wanted to compete for my business, and then I found they're all very close. You know, and. You know, so it takes a while. Every bank specializes. But here's one key thing I found, and it's not to do with your software, but a tidbit. Mm. If I would have been asking all those bankers who turn, turn me down, say, we don't do this kind of loan, who do you know that does? I would have found those four people a lot faster because I thought it would be ridiculous to ask them, who is your competition that would do this? But they all used to work for each other. They're all highly sophisticated and know exactly what all the other banks do because it's their job to know what the other banks do and, and know what the other banks' niches are. I could have found those four banks and probably one day, if I had just asked the four people that turned me down, who does this kind of loan? Who wants this kind of loan? Yep. And they told me, but I didn't ask them because I didn't think it was professional to ask them for, for one of their competitors, but they do it all the time. Well, and especially when we started, what well, one of the CPA firms that uses our software, the CPA came back and said, this is a look under the hood of bank underwriting that I haven't seen before. And so that's kind of what we did. I partnered with a commercial banker originally to write the code. So we find, we know with commercial properties, five units or more, Right? We know that they look for three different things right out of the gate. They want our net operating income on the building. They want the debt service coverage ratio on that building, the ability to make those payments. And then they want to get some kind of valuation. Well, with software, we can give them two out of three. We can give them the net operating income and we can give them the debt service coverage ratio. And we can give them to them right away. And that frontline banker is a different person today than when you and I started where you were actually talking to people who could refer you places and tell you, you might have more of an order taker up front in an institution today, or electronically you're sending something in, you can't even talk to anybody. So it's got to get to the decision maker. And when they see those two things, if the debt service coverage ratio that they require at a particular bank is 1.25 and your transactions 1.55, you're covering that well, you're in a great spot to say, Hey, look how strong my transaction is, I want a better rate. Or I'm gonna shop this and you can because you're giving them the metrics right up front for how you're covering their payments. Different way to communicate than what we all had. So how complicated is this to figure out? Like you, could, I mean, you gotta take some, take some um, 
tutorials or something on this, or is it pretty self-explanatory? It, I, I'm I'm an older guy, so tech and I just you know I grew up where it was there you know there wasn't a cell phone, and the first one you walked around with a box like you were in a war movie doing communication, right? That first one got mounted in my car. I couldn't believe it. So I mandated it had to be easy to use, right? Takes five minutes to do your input. There's little eyes around the thing that you hover over. It gives you information on tool tips every step of the way. You and I can do it in, in five minutes or less. So once you do one, you know, now you've learned how to ride the bike. You just make the thing sing from there. Here's a good point. You know, it, it, it it basically is helping you decipher whether the deal's worth doing yourself before you even decide to go to a bank, right? You can, you get, you're helping a person size up the property from the get go, you know, and then if you're not meeting certain ratios, you either got to go negotiate a better price before you make the offer, you know, or I mean, before you consummate the deal, or you have to find a way that you're going to increase the income uh, to make it worth it or make it bankable. So, or cut the expenses, right. And I, I, we have people in that software that use this now to establish purchase price. They won't even leave their office. The agents will call or they're on LoopNet or wherever they are, and they're looking at a transaction and they vet it for financeability first, and they won't even leave the office to look at it until they feel as though it's a transaction that they can get bank or, or finance against. What are the, why bother? The seller, if the seller is too high, why are we going to retrade later? This makes perfect sense. I mean, this is real common sense. You're charging $197 annually. Yeah. It's a non-issue. Um, what it, you know, if that helps save you a quarter of a percent on a half a million dollar loan, it makes a hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars. I mean, one hundred ninety-seven dollars look like chump change. Um, so I want you guys to go over to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash leverage. Get over to the show notes. Get hooked up with John Matheson, and, and, and if you're interested and you want to take a little deeper dive, get with this company, let him, let him show you, answer your questions. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be on uh, this, this show. Uh, we, our goal here is to help people find their way, whether, whether they want to be in the kind of business I'm in or the kind of business you're in. I don't really care what kind of business they want to be in. I just want them to get uh, independent and get financially free and, and be the person that they're meant to be on this planet for instead of a slave to some company or a slave to um, bills. So this is another great asset for, for the right people. It's not for everybody. Nothing's for everybody. Uh, but if you're into small commercial or you want to do apartment complexes or you're looking at strip centers or storage, uh, storage facilities or whatever, this is a great place to start and get yourself organized and get yourself looking like a pro I don't even know how you argue, argue with $197 annually. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to buy it just so I can take it over to my office and say, what can we plug in here? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's good. Yeah, you'll have fun with it. Uh, all right, man. Anything you want to say to the, the maybe the new entrepreneur out there that's going into real estate? You know, everything you just said aligns with what we talk about in our in our boardrooms too. And it's – a tough time right now, but you and I both know, having been through this three times, different contagions each time, right? This is the fourth time we'll all get through it. What was it Churchill said? Success isn't final, failure is not fatal, it's the courage to continue that counts, right? So just keep moving through this and you will find somebody. We've got a lender right inside the software that represents 110 specialty lenders who will fund you today if you have a good transaction. It's right inside our Lend Leverage Connect. It's just keep moving to be able to buy the properties that you think are a good value and keep yourself going through this. You will get through it. So it's not just the software, but you also have suggestions for people where to submit if they don't. Yeah, the lenders came to us and said, hey, we want to meet people who are making this thing turn green, as you can imagine. If you can make an underwriting software say, yeah, it's a go, the lender obviously wants to meet you. So we picked one that represents 110 nationwide and said, all right, you help the people get it in, you know, get back to them within a day with what's going on and help them get funded. So we just, we actually just did that based on what's happening today. Cause you know, your audience, like you said, how can I help your audience? Well, they're sitting there saying, what do I do? And how, even if I get something, who will finance me today? So we went and did that. 
Would it work for note hypothecation? Can I enter my notes and my cash flow and my expenses into that? Just instead of, you know, they wouldn't be properties, but they'd be notes. Would it work for note hypothecation? You and I would have to take a ride in one of them. I can help you. I'll, you know, there's, we've got one for, for multifamily, one for commercial, one for mixed use, and one for just a straight business line of credit or for a credit card or for an equipment loan in business, term loans. So depending upon what you have, you would enter that in and, and it's something that the lenders could take a look at, sure. Okay, so I do wanna, let's make sure after this call that I get with Julie and let's have an hour uh, where I can sit down and explore me putting notes into this software yep. and if it'll give me the result I want because if it does, I'm all in and I can probably, you know, there might be a whole different audience for you that you are not even thinking about. You know what and, I mean? And here's what you and I know. If there isn't, we have the programmers who can write that code. <laughs> I can't imagine that it would be that big a shift over. So it might just be a few subtle changes, or, right. you know, and then, and then you're open to people to bundle notes and go, go to a bank and say, you know, I want to pledge these notes as collateral. Mm -hmm or and take out all my private lenders and free them up. That's what I do. It's just an endless, yep. you know, three or $4 million worth of notes. And then I owe like $2 million underneath. And I just want to find, I just want to get the 2 million underneath refinance and free up their money because you know, it's a lot easier for me to buy some of these crappy little properties with a private. It would never fly through a bank because they're never. too, I haven't had a chance to fix them. I haven't had a chance to stabilize them. But my private lenders have been with me so long, they don't care. You know, they, they're lending money to me and this asset that they have a first lien on. And so I'm able to do it really, I'm strike fast while the iron's hot with the private money, but then you get these bundles and then I want to go take it and get permanently long-term finance at a rate that I can live with and free up my private money again. Because essentially, you know, I can buy the whole town with just a handful of private lenders because I just keep giving them their money back and then getting it out and then giving their money back. Well, and getting it. You're right on. We put in the software in the multifamily, especially we put in an equity piece. So you're able to show the private investor how you're going to be able to pay the bank loan because the private investors you and I'll work with will say, well, I don't want to put more money in. You know, I'm coming in on the equity side. I don't want to make your payments for you. How are you covering the mortgage, right? So the software shows, but then it also will show how to cover the equity investor and you're in position for a refinance to take them out. And you show them how that works right in the software. I've got people who do different from you, but they do that and they show the private lender how they get in and how they get out using the software. So yeah, we can make this work. All right. Um, I'll get Julie to make us an appointment and I'll Terrific. probably have a business partner with me and we'll sit down and we'll see how it works or see if we can't make it work if there's some variables. Love it. Uh, this is Mitch Steven. I've been with John Matheson. Uh, he's got some fantastic software for you to use to look like a pro in front of a bank. Check it out. Reinvestorsummit.com forward slash leverage. I'd like to thank everyone out there for taking the time to get you some John Matheson and to tune in. Please, Stop by and visit our sponsor, TaxFreeFuture.com. You won't believe what your financial advisors are not telling you. We're going to tell you what they're not telling you. We're going to tell you why they're not telling you. And then you can do with it what you want. But it's a real eye-opener. And it's kind of like one of those things. It's been in front of you the whole time. You just couldn't quite figure it out. But it's real simple. TaxFreeFuture.com. All right, we're out of here. Thanks so much, John. Thank you, sir.